What's going on everybody? We got some Guns N' Roses news today. So both of these stories originate from Mick Wall's new book, Last of the Giants. And I'm actually currently reading the book. I actually am reading through it pretty quickly. I thought it would take me forever to read through it. I'm around 120 pages into it. And I've got to say so far I'm actually enjoying the book quite a bit. Um, you know, as someone who read Duff and Slash's book, it's pretty evident that, you know, the story starts at the beginning of you know, Axel slash and Duff and Steven's life. And Izzy sort of talks about their background as a kid, where they grew up. But it's pretty evident from reading the book that they, uh, that Mick Walls borrowed heavily from Slash's book, from Duff's book, probably from Vicki Hamilton's book, whose book I haven't read, and Steven Adler's book, who I, which I haven't read either, because he retells a lot of the same stories, but he's able to weave them in so that they do, it does read reasonably well. I'm actually surprised how much I'm enjoying it. I thought it would be a very poor read after the reviews I heard about the unauthorized Axel Rose biography Mick Wall had written. But uh, hopefully I should be done it within a week or two and do a full review for you guys. But the first story uh, comes from, uh, both these stories come from Mick Wall's new book. And uh, this one is about how Slash and Axel avoided alleged statutory rape charges from a 15-year-old. Now, if you guys read Mick Wall's book, and the excerpt is I've linked to down below in the description box, um, th there was this place called The Hell House, which was this place in L.A., which was like a seedy one-bedroom house where a lot of the members of Guns N' Roses would get together. They'd write songs. A lot of the songs appear on Appetite for Destruction. Some of them appeared on the Illusions records as well. And they also did a lot of drugs and sex, and a lot of that debauchery kind of happened in this house. And there was also parties happening around the area as well. And uh, one of the stories that Slash tells in his book is about this 15-year-old girl who apparently Axel slept with. She woke up, I guess, uh, the next morning and, fro and basically freaked out and was locked out of the house and ran down the street naked and then went to the police to file charges against Axel and Slash. So during that time, Axel and Slash had to lay low. They stayed with Vicki Hamilton, who was their manager at the time. And if you guys ever watch Guns N' Roses photographic history, Slash briefly mentions this incident where he talks about how they had to hide from the cops when they got those rape charges. Now, if you guys want to read the whole story, I've linked to it down below. Let's talk about the next story. In the same article from Medium.com, and it's also taken from Mick Wall's new book, uh, one of the stories they tell about being in the Hell House is that it was so crazy while some members of Guns N' Roses would be having sex with women, the other members would be stealing stuff from their purse or stealing cash from them. And the other thing that they revealed, and I talked a bit about this in one of the uh, past videos I did, I think it was the article about the 10 things you didn't know about Guns N' Roses. Uh, apparently Izzy was a heroin dealer at one point, and apparently Joe, uh, Joe Perry from Aerosmith stopped by the house to actually buy heroin from Izzy just before the guys in Aerosmith were starting to sober up. So I don't know, I've never heard that story before, that was a new story to me. And maybe it was came from Vicki Hamilton's book, for all I know. So before we move on to the next story, I want to let you guys know probably one of the better stories I've read so far in McWall's book is uh, when they talk about Guns N' Roses uh, basically being offered different record deals from different record companies. So it was around 1986. A lot of record companies were basically having a bidding war over Guns N' Roses. And the members of Guns N' Roses knew that they could take advantage of this because they really didn't have any money. And they were being wined and dined by these different record executives and A&R people. And one of the record companies they were about to sign with, I think, was from Electra Records. And the lady that Axel and the band had met with, um, she really wanted to sign the band. And Axel basically looked at her and said, if you run naked down, Sunset, if you run naked down the Sunset Strip uh, by this day, we will sign with you. And sure enough... Uh, of course, it never happened. They ended up signing with Geffen Records, but I thought that was one of the more humorous stories from the from the book. Whether it's true or not, you know, I don't know, but I think that's a story that Tom Zutat had actually told McWall about the book. And then the last story I want to cover is it's almost the one-year anniversary of since Guns N' Roses officially announced they were going to be partially reuniting to play Coachella. So it was, you know, late December, we we're getting all these rumors that Guns N' Roses were going to be doing a stadium tour, they're going to be playing Coachella. And then January 4th, 2016, there's an announcement that they will be reuniting, at least Axel Slash and Duff will be reuniting. Duff basically posts this on his social media feed with the Guns N' Roses logo and Coachella, and Slash did the same thing. And I'll tell you what, it was a great time to be a Guns N' Roses fan. It still is a great time to be a Guns N' Roses fan. And for those of you who are wondering who played Coachella this year with Guns N' Roses, these are the artists. So Guns N' Roses uh, played two weekends, and they had a bunch of other bands they were playing with. 
I've always found the lineup of Coachella is kind of weird. It's like a mishmash of hip hop, EDM, rock. Uh, I like the uh, kind of concerts or the kind of festivals that are more focused, like just rock festivals or hard rock festivals. I always think it would be great to go to the Download Festival or Glastonbury, any of those festivals in Europe. That basically does it for today's news. I want to know from you guys, where were you guys when you now heard that Guns N' Roses were going to be reuniting for Coachella? Comment down below and let me know. And if any of you guys picked up Mick Wall's book, what are your impressions of it so far? Let me know in the comments. And as always, guys, if you want to stay up to date on the latest Guns N' Roses news, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And make sure you follow me on Twitter at Guns N' Roses Daily. Take care.